Wait, I'm gonna take this off. Hello, welcome to the Ames Public Library today. My name is Miss Bree and I'm here for story time. Thank you for joining us. I was wearing my mask this morning, but since I'm here by myself and I really want you to be able to hear me really nicely, I'm gonna take it off and just set it off to the side for now. All right, are you ready for a fun story time? Thank you for joining us. This week in our weekly challenges that we're putting out there, it's all about nature and exploring outside. So I thought I'd bring some of that into story time today. So we're gonna start with our opening song because we always like to welcome everybody together. So we're gonna start by doing our hello friends. See our friends are giving a hug. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time, point to your watch. Time to say hello. All right, you guys ready to do it with me? Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Excellent. All right, we are all ready for story time today. And I'm going to start by a fun rhyme that we like to do in story time sometime, all about a tree. And it's really nice because our trees are finally starting to get green and have a lot of leaves and blossoms on them. Um, it smells so good outside if you're not allergic to all of that pollen. Um, and it's really nice. Springtime is so fun. And so let's enjoy a rhyme about a tree and all the fun things that live in trees. So a bird can live in a tree, right? Lots of birds lives in trees. So we're gonna do the American Sign Language for bird, which is if you put your hand here and you make a beak with your hand. So can you make a fist? And then you just put your two fingers out and you make a beak right in front of your face. This is bird. Good. Do bees live in trees? Yeah, some beehives are in trees. If you've ever read the Berenstein Bears, they're constantly hunting for bees in trees. So a B, we make the American Sign Language letter B with our hand, and then we fold down our fingers as we push it away off to the right. So B is B. Let's practice that again. Here, B. Excellent job. All right, here's another one that lives in trees. Did you know this? Especially by water. Lots of them like to hang in the trees and then drop down into the water, which is super cool to watch happen. So the sign for snake in our tree is going to be, you're going to put two out in front of you and, and wiggle out like you're wiggling like a snake. Snake. Excellent. Good job. Okay. So the last thing that lives in a tree, and we know this from other rhymes that we do, are monkeys. Monkeys love living in trees and they hop from tree to tree to tree and they use their tails and their arms and they cause lots of naughty, naughty uh, shenanigans. Um, so monkeys also live in trees and if you want to do the sign for monkey, you're just going to do this, okay? Kind of curl your hands out in front of you like a monkey. All right, our rhyme goes like this. A tree may be a home for a bird. A tree may be a home for a bee. A tree may be a home for a snake. A tree may be a home for a monkey. Hmm, I wonder if a tree would be a good home for me? Let's try that again, okay? Because now you have your signs down. A tree may be a home for a bird. A tree may be a home for a bee. A tree may be a home for a snake. A tree may be a home for a monkey. Do you think a tree would be a good home for me? How about you? Would you like to live in a tree? Sometimes I think it would be fun maybe to have a playhouse out in a tree and be able to go out there and explore and use our imaginations. That would be fun. All right, we're going to do one more rhyme also about things that love to live in trees. How many of you, if you look out in your backyard, ever see squirrels? Are there squirrels in the backyard? Hmm. My niece and nephew actually had a squirrel in their house this week. Oh, squirrels are not supposed to be in the house. Luckily, 
they got the squirrel out. But we're gonna do a rhyme all about a gray squirrel. And gray squirrel, gray squirrels have bushy tails, so I want you guys to shake your bushy tails. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, shake your bushy tail. All right, crinkle up your funny nose. Put a nut between your toes. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. All right, let's do it. Can you do it along with me? Ready? Get your tail ready. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Crinkle up your funny nose. Put a nut between your toes. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Excellent job, my friends. Okay, we're gonna do something really fun with our story today. We're not gonna share a book like we usually do. We're gonna tell a story in a different way. And we're gonna draw as we tell our story today. Um, there's really fun ways that people do draw while they tell stories all the time. So you can look up some amazing um, YouTube clips and stuff like that. I know Mo Willems has a bunch where he can draw and tell a story at the same time. Um, but we are going to do that today. And I want you guys to follow along with me and see if you can figure out what I am actually drawing. Because by the end of my story, I will have a full picture of an actual thing. So I want you to see if you can guess it along with me. All right, our story today is called The Horn Players. Now, our story is about a man named Bob. And Bob is from a planet way out in the solar system called Arpeggio. And Bob has a special talent. He knows music, like really great music. He has discovered some big time bands like Sonia and the Solar Flares. Have you ever heard of that? Hmm. How about the Supernovas or the Black Holes? No, haven't heard of those. Hmm. Well, there are huge bands out in the galaxy and Bob has discovered them all and turned them into huge, super, super big musicians. So Bob is always on the lookout for some new music that he can turn into the next big star. So he's flying around in his saucer one day and he comes across a planet that looks really beautiful. It's green and blue and it's covered in all kinds of clouds. And he thinks maybe there's some musical talent there. So he takes his flying saucer and he lands on the planet. So he gets out of his flying saucer and he looks around and he's like, this is really a beautiful planet. And he decides, I'm gonna take a break and then we're gonna go on an adventure. So he climbs up a little bit of a hill and he sits down and he decides to eat his lunch, a piece of pizza. And all of a sudden, Here's something very faint, but it sounds like horns. And he thinks, maybe there's some beautiful music here. Let's go figure out if we can find it. So he hears it very faintly. So he decides to climb up this mountain to see if he can see it better. So he's climbing and he's climbing and he's climbing and he passes three smoldering volcanoes on his way up the mountain. All the while, he can start to hear this music get a little bit louder. He has no idea where it's coming from, but it sounds like, like trumpets maybe? No, not trumpets. Maybe trombones, cornets, some kind of horn. And he is determined to figure out if he can figure out what this, these horns are. When all of a sudden, he sees a mountain and he thought, if I get to the top of this mountain, I can for sure see where these horns are coming from. But when he gets to the top, all of a sudden he can't hear the horns anymore. All he hears is the earth shaking, shaking and trembling. An earthquake, oh no. He can't hear these horns anymore. All he hears is the shaking and the earth splits into this big crack all around him. 
All he can think of is he needs to get out of here and get back to his spaceship. But when the earth settles down, he settles down and he can hear it again. He can hear the beautiful horns and he thinks that's more important. I have got to find these horns. Well, he's done being on the mountain. He's done with earthquakes. So he takes off and he decides to go down in a valley and all the way down to the swamp in a local area. And when he gets down to the bottom of the swamp, the horns are so loud and he realizes he has got to be close. And he looks around and he tries to figure it out. And right behind him, he sees a great big boulder. So he decides, let's get on top of that. Maybe I can see around me. So he creeps up to the boulder and he looks over and on the other side are three creatures, the strangest creatures he has ever seen before. All on the other side of this boulder. Each of these three creatures has three horns on their head. And through these nine horns, they are blowing out air and playing these horns and making the most exquisite music that Bob has ever heard. This is where the horns are coming from, these creatures. All of a sudden, one of them looks up and sees Bob peeking over over this boulder. And they kind of get nervous and scared. And Bob says, don't run away, wait. You guys are amazing. Please, 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 you have to come with me. I will turn you into great big stars. The galaxy needs to hear this music that you are playing out of your horns. These three creatures kind of look at each other and they go off and they talk and they try to decide what to do. And one decides, <clears throat> he just grunts and walks away. And the other two follow him until they come to a great big cave. Well, Bob, of course, follows them, and he's watching what they're doing, and they go into this cave, and all three creatures start packing their suitcases. Well, Bob gets really excited at this. Wait, does this mean you're coming with me? Are you gonna come with me? And they pack up their suitcases, and they stand there, and they look at Bob. And Bob looks at them, and he makes up his mind. They're ready to go. Well, hurry on, come on, let's go to my spaceship. So they follow Bob all the way back up to his spaceship. And they sail away into the galaxy to become the next big thing. They have really large hopes and dreams now. And they fly away until they are just a speck in the sky. And that is our creature that Bob saw behind the rock. What did we draw? Yeah, looks like a triceratops to me with three big horns on his head that he, they blew through to make the beautiful music. And this is kind of a folk tale, fairy tale. It's just one version of a theory that someone had one time of why we no longer have triceratops on earth because the last three triceratops were taken because they played such beautiful music and they went to share that with the galaxy. But unfortunately for us, because we will never get to hear the beautiful music coming out of their horns. It was kind of fun to, to, to uh, tell a whole story just by what we drew on the board. There's lots and lots of draw and tell stories out there. Um, I encourage you to do that or make up your own with your parents at home. Start telling a story and figure out what lines you want to draw and make up something that happens as you go along and see what kind of a design or a creature happens when you're done with your story. It's really fun. All right, so we were also talking about nature this week. And in nature, there's lots of fun things that you can do with it. So we were talking about art and our challenges. And so I wanted to share a craft with you that is super easy for you to do at home. And I do have to apologize because I decided to plan this story time on Monday and I really should have been thinking ahead and planned it last week. 
um, because then I could have had my craft prepped and ready for you um, because it's not quite ready yet. But it is super fun and we've done it before and it totally works. So I encourage you all to do this at home. But we are growing grass on caterpillars and making fuzzy caterpillars. Um, so the best thing to do is take an egg carton and I highly recommend um, one of the cardboard ones. Um, they are biodegradable and better for the environment um, and much easier to kind of manipulate and paint. Um, because what we want to do is we want to cut one of the strips off. So this will make two of our craft today. And then we want to paint it. Um, so we just use regular old tempera paint with just regular old brush. Um, any kind of Crayola, craft paint, anything will do. Um, this cardboard works really well, so any paint you have at home would work for this. Um, we just happen to have temper paint because that's what we use here at the library. So paint your caterpillar. And then what I used was just a hole punch, and I punched a couple holes in there and used a chenille stem pipe cleaner and made some antenna. And I had some googly eyes to be able to make the face. And I painted my caterpillar. Then all you have to do is fill it up with some dirt and grass seed. So the grass seed we had at home was actually dirt, fertilizer, and grass seed all together, which was perfect. Otherwise, you can use potting soil or topsoil or something like that, whatever dirt you have at home. Maybe you have a dirt pile in your backyard. You can just go dig up some dirt and fill in. doesn't take much dirt. And then sprinkle your grass seed on top. And then here's the key. Make sure that you really water it. You're gonna to wanna to water it every day because that grass seed needs a lot of water to germinate and start to grow. And then once you start to see these little seeds start to break open and things start to grow out of them, then you wanna make sure you keep watering it, but also put it somewhere where it's sunny. Maybe it's back out in a patio, or this would also fit on your windowsill if you have a window that gets lots of light. And eventually, all of this grass seed will start to grow. And your caterpillar will get hair that grows up and up and up and gets really big and tall. So tall that you might even need to take scissors and give it a little haircut, right? You could do your own haircut. Work on those scissor skills, building those muscles in your hand, and give your caterpillar a haircut. So it might take a couple weeks um, for the hair to actually grow up um, you'll see it start to grow after about a week, um, and then it'll get really tall after another week or so. Um, the longer that you keep it and maintain it, the better it'll be. Um, so I just started mine a few days ago, so I can see that some of my grass seed has started to split open, but it hasn't actually started to grow yet. So um, that's why I should have started it last week, and then you could actually see the grass. But I encourage you to do a fun nature craft at home and share with us what you did. Um, or how you did it. Um, we would love to see other craft ideas and you can post it in the comments of this or tell us, send us an email, um, however you'd like to connect with us. So thank you very much for joining us for story time today. We'll see you again next week.